Has he blessed you this morning? Hallelujah. See, when we start praising God, there's a sweet, sweet spirit that comes into this place. We begin to praise him, and the Bible lets us know God will inhabit. He'll get right in there and help you praise him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Here we go. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. Senior Pastor Elders R. Sims and the Living Hope Bible Church, we greet you. We ask that you just go ahead and allow the Lord to bless you in such ways that your, your praise will just come forward as never before. We thank God for the privilege to be here this morning. By way of scripture out of Psalm 100, the Bible says in the New King James Version, Make a joyful noise unto, unto the, Lord, the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with what? Gladness. Yes. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. And our New Testament scripture is coming from Philippians chapter 4 beginning at verse 4. He says this, amen? Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say 
rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known, made known unto God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Occupy your mind with the things that praise God. Hallelujah. Y'all ready to praise God? Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus, we come before you this morning, Father, thanking you for the privilege of worship. Thank you, we thank you, Lord God, for the fellowship that we share. We thank you, Lord God, for being here with us, guiding us, taking care of us. Thank you, Lord God, for bringing us here safely. Bless those who are yet traveling. Continue, Lord God, to use us in a mighty way in this community and that those ripples that go from this community abroad will just continue to amplify the love and the grace that you give to us that we may share with others. Bless our service today, Lord God, that it bring glory to you and that somebody will say yes to Jesus. Maybe somebody feels they can't come back. Let them know your arms are always open for them to return. Thank you, God, for this time and this moment. In the name of Jesus Christ, and all who agree, say amen. 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 Well, go ahead and put your hands together and praise God. He's worthy. Hallelujah. We just want to praise you. Just wanna praise you forever and ever and ever. For all you've done for me, blessings and glory, blessings and glory, and all they all belong to you.
clap your hands again like you mean it. That's what happens when you lay down your burdens and you recognize that Jesus, yes. I said Jesus is the light of the world. If you agree with that, go ahead and clap your hands and praise God. Hallelujah. Walk in the light right here. Voluntold, volunteer to come forth and assist with a music ministry. I mean, a media ministry. Music as well, amen. Maybe that's a uh, confirmation of prayers that are being sent up. Now, you know, sometimes we sit and we wonder what it is God would have us to do. And I'll challenge you with this. If something's on your mind all the time and it's in glory, it's a glorified God, that's more likely what God is calling you to do. Maybe you're just a prayer warrior and you just can't stop praying for people that is a ministry that is very much needed in these last days. We have a prayer line that we have at 6.30 in the morning and 7 p.m. at night. And we've seen miracle after miracle after miracle happen because God's people were there to ask God for anything. Amen. 
The Bible lets us know that if we ask him anything in the name of Jesus, we have what we ask for. God is true to his word. He has always kept it, and he always will keep it. The bottom line is, are we going to limit God in what he's doing by just not asking? Scripture says we have not because we ask not. And then sometimes we ask amiss. We ask in wrong fashion. We ask for stuff that really doesn't benefit us. So God blesses us with an understanding that his spirit will lead us into all truth. He will teach us what we need to pray for. And the more we study his word, the more promises we know we have. Remember this, know whose you are. Know who you are and know what you have. Amen? Big and step to, come on forward, brother. Let's put our hands together and praise God for the chairperson of our hospitality committee. He's been serving God faithfully, and he's a wonderful example for the rest of us. Amen? Good morning, church. I, I, I was doing donut run, so that's why I was a little bit, a little bit behind time. Uh, but I have been asked to talk to you this morning, or I should say I want to talk to you this morning, a little bit about our anniversary uh, that's coming up in July. We are scheduled right now for a two-day event, uh, the 23rd, uh, which was, is a Saturday. Right now in the, in the plans is to have a concert out on the patio where you will be able to come bring your lawn chairs, uh, enjoy an evening, of, a couple of hours of music. Uh, in addition to uh, Pastor wants to serve you hamburgers and hot dogs while this is going on. So it's, it'll be like a summertime concert, all right? The other part of it would be Sunday the 24th when we will celebrate the, the 30th anniversary of the church. Uh, we will, that's when we will have a, a guest speaker, uh, we will have a banquet after services that day. Initially, he wanted to have this catered, okay? Well, we went out and did some legwork on that, and as the economy dictates, it's very expensive. So uh, not only is the food expensive, but the services that uh, would be provided is expensive. So what we have decided to do is, uh, is do it ourselves. So what we're going to, what we are hoping to do, I'll say that. We are, uh, as I say, going to cook it, our, uh, do all of the pre preparation of the food ourselves. So what we would like is that anyone that is willing and have a desire to participate with us, uh, if you have a specialty that you cook, uh, that you, you know, uh, don't mind doing uh, and, and enjoy doing for others, uh, we would like for you to come alongside us and our committee and uh, uh, help us put together a menu uh, and, and uh, prepare a meal for our church on the, third, on the 25th, uh, 24th, I'm sorry. So, uh, yeah, the, of July, 23rd and 24th of July. So if you are, have that uh, desire that you would like to participate, uh, you can contact myself, and I'll give you my phone number at the end of this, or any of the, the uh, committee members. Uh, I don't see, oh, Sister D is here. She is one of the committee members, and uh, Suzette, uh, Sister Suzette, as Sister Becky is on vacation, she is one. Uh, as well as we have Reverend Shaw, and she is on vacation as well. So any of those, uh, will, 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 you can let them know what your desires are. If you desire to participate with us, uh, you can always call me, and I will give you my, my phone number is 303-325-4628. Uh, uh, that's 303-325-4657. So anyone that has a desire to participate with us, you can contact me. 
uh, either by phone or just see me, grab me. Uh, we're still in the planning stages, so uh, we will be, uh, uh, today, there is a sign-up sheet out, should be out in the lobby. I'm going to check that when I go out, uh, but there should be a sign-up sheet for you to sign up whether you're going to attend. Just to let you know, there is going to be a charge for the, uh, for the meal, but we don't want you to back away from that just because of that. For those that may have a difficulty, because we realize this day and age, everybody's having a problem money-wise. So if, you're go if we have a problem uh, 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 paying for it, we are going to try to make arrangements to take care of, because we don't want anyone not to be able to attend, okay? So uh, uh, we will have information about the concert should be coming out this week. Uh, I think that Lonnie and, and some others are solidifying the guests that will be performing. Uh, it'll be a totally free concert. Uh, as I said, we are uh, just trying to make this a hallelujah good time. This is our 30th anniversary, and we wanted to make it uh, a wonderful occasion for each and every member. Just remember, you are living hope, okay? So let's uh, get to come together and, and just make it a, a wonderful occasion for not only ourselves, but for any guests that may come or any people that participate. All right? Uh, if you have any questions, please contact me, okay? And just to foot stomp just a little bit, don't wait to the last minute. You know how we procrastinate and we lay, wait to the last minute? We need to know how many people are, have a desire to come. And we also need to know if you're willing to lend your expertise in whatever it is, like Sister Laverne and that, that, that uh, peach cobbler. Amen. Those are the kind of things that we need. We need them as far in advance as possible so we know if, it, if we don't have enough, where well, we need to make it up at. Amen. We like to plan and make sure that we have a contingency in the event things happen. Life does happen. And if you're thinking about coming, and as, the, as the deacon said, you might not have the money. That's all right. Put your name down. Somebody in here might be able to, to, to pay the cost as well. And if you have enough where you can pay a little bit extra, do that. That's supporting what we're trying to do. What we want to do is rock this neighborhood. What we want to do is rock this neighborhood. And if we're going to be outside, we want people to say, what is going on over there? Let me turn aside and see what this thing is. And they'll be introduced to Jesus because it's all about him. 30 years in this community, when many churches have closed their doors, never to open again, the lights are still on here at LHBC. <laughs> Amen. And if you stand to your feet, we're going to have a, a moment of prayer. If you'd like to come forward, you certainly can. And we'd like to ask you if uh, we still are ad adhering to the protocols of COVID. Uh, you know how it is. We get a little careful with hugging folk these days because we have to be. That's called wisdom. But if you would like to come forward, you certainly can. And if you understand what we do up here, we got an atomizer. So we keep spraying and making sure that we kill all the cooties we possibly can. And this is not abrasive. It will not stain your clothes or anything like that. So you don't have to worry about that. Amen? But if you'd like to come forward, uh, a couple of concerns that we have. Pastor Sims is traveling. Uh, he had a double homegoing celebration in his family, and he went there to be a support to the family and to conduct their service. He's also preaching this morning. So he's always busy. And understand this, and uh, Pastor Juan and others who have sat in the seat of being a pastor understand the first person the enemy is going to try to come against is the leadership. He's going to come against the head first. And he's going to try to do everything he can to upset him and destroy him or her. So we ask that you continue to lift our pastor in prayer. You out there that maybe you've never met Pastor Sims, but you see him online and you have been blessed by the ministry. And that's another thing, too. If the ministry is helping you, you ought to support it. We don't beg around here. We take a born offering. But if you know that this is blessing you, you have not been participating by sharing to make sure that this stuff, we understand it's not free. I said there's nothing free on the face of this earth. And the first people they're going to try to tax and bring grief to is the church. We just can't let that happen. Amen. Our sister, Reverend Dr. Yolanda Shaw is traveling, and her son made it to Mexico without incident. 
he drove from here to Mexico. And Pastor Sims was talking this morning, he was talking about the, going through the valley of the shadow of death. And if you've ever driven a, a truck like he's got, beautiful blue truck, and you're going from here to Mexico, there are a whole lot of people probably want to take that from him. But God said, uh-uh. Uh-uh. He's been prayed for. And as they began to look at his belongings and wanted to take them, there was an entourage that they saw surrounding that truck. And you've got that same entourage that intercedes in your life. They're called ministry spirits. When sometimes people look at you and they see you as a target of opportunity, God says, they're not alone. Amen. Deaconess Teresa Davis is feeling much better. You know, she was ill. And uh, Deacon Davis said that she's doing better and he's home taking care of his bride, his queen. And Sister Suzette Randolph is not with us this morning. She did the wise thing. She was not feeling very well. She got a little dizzy, so she stayed at home too. Amen? But we thank God for that wisdom because you know you can be driving as you're dizzy and next thing you know you're in the hospital because you knew better. Sometimes God will slow us down so we will get some rest. Amen? Let us bow our heads and be thankful for what he has done, what he is doing, and what he shall do. Heavenly Father, we come before your holy presence this morning. We humbly bow our heads and thank you for allowing us this privilege. Lord, fellowship is so special and so precious these days. And you had to allow COVID to enter in to help us realize just how precious it is. There are many, Lord God, who struggle right now and who are truly, truly, truly in trouble. But you have, some, you have promised to supply all our need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus, and through Christ Jesus. And we thank you. We ask you to bless those who are here, bless those who are streaming in, to understand that you care about everything that goes on in the life of every human being. There are no insignificant people on the face of this earth. We're all made in your image. And if we'll take care of one another the way you designed for it to be in the first place, we'd have no need for Red Cross, or any of these other organizations to supply humanitarian needs. There are people out there right now, Lord God, who will take care of a dog before they take care of a person. And that's a shame. You didn't mean for it to be that way. You wanted man to take care of man and man to take care of the animals as well and the rest of the earth. We messed it up, Lord God, but it can be redeemed if we put our trust in you. Bless us with the rest of our service today. Pastor Juan Romero will be preaching our morning service. We ask God that you just bless him anoint him afresh give him that boldness as only you can give and he's not going to be listening to see if we say amen or not he's just going to preach what you gave him to preach for your glory and our good and we thank you Lord God for blessing us with our right now in the name of Jesus and thank you Lord God if there's anything I've forgotten charge it to my head and not to my heart we ask your blessing upon all that we shall do this day that you receive all the glory all the honor and all the praise. And it is in that name, that matchless name of Jesus Christ, we do say it. And we all say amen and amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. 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 you hear after we sing this sermonic will be that of our very own Reverend Juan Romero. Hallelujah.
deserve it. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> Gloria a Dios. Buenos dias. Es un gusto estar. Oh, wait, hold on. That's not until 12 o'clock. <laughs> Praise God. Gloria a Dios. How are you today? Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Before we get started, I'm going to go ahead and dismiss the children to go to their children's church. So all children are dismissed to their children's church. And as they... As they head out, I'm going to ask you please to stand to your feet and open to the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel. And I hope you brought your Bibles because we are Living Hope Bible Church. And I thought it would be best that you would hear from the Word of God instead of hearing from me. So Daniel chapter 1, and the title to today's message is Take a Stand. 
take a stand coming out of the book of Daniel, chapter 1, verse 1. And the word of God reads, and I'm reading from the New American Standard. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. The Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, along with some of the vessels of the house of God, and he brought them to the land of Shinar, to the house of his God, and he brought the vessels into the treasury of his God. Then the king ordered Ashpenaz, the chief of his officials, to bring in some of the sons of Israel, including some of the royal family and of the nobles, youths in whom was no defect, who were good-looking, showing intelligence in every branch of wisdom, endowed with understanding and discerning of knowledge, and who had ability for serving in the king's court. And he ordered him to teach them the literature and the language of the Chaldeans. The king appointed for them a daily ration from the king's choice food and from the wine which he drank, and appointed that they should be educated three years, at the end of which they were to enter the king's personal service. Now among them from the sons of Judah were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Then the commander of the officials assigned new names to them, and to Daniel he assigned the name Betashazar, to Hananiah Shadrach, to Mishael Meshach, and to Azariah Abednego. But, everybody say but. but. <laughs> you said but in church. <laughs> but Daniel made up his mind that he would not defile himself with the king's choice food or with the wine which with he drank. So he sought permission from the commander of the officials that he might not defile himself. Precious Father in heaven, we come before you right now and we thank you. We thank you for this opportunity, Lord, because we have sang, we have prayed, and Father, we will be giving later on. But now, Father God, we are before your word your eternal word, your holy word. And so, Father, we ask that what we do not know that you teach us, what we are not that you make us, and what we do not have that you give us. Asking, Father God, that it be your spirit to guide us into your word so that we may be made like your son. Father, speak to us, but not just so that we would know. Speak to us so that we would change. We pray this, Father God, in Jesus' mighty and holy name. And together we all say, amen. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. And for those of you that are watching online, God bless you. Dios te bendiga. And no, you do not have to adjust your screens. Um, I am the better looking of the pastors, so. Uh, and it's, it's okay. He's not here, so we can, we, can, we can do that. He's not here. We're living in... Um, some very, very peculiar times. It seems like the world is going crazy. It seems like there's something every week. And I have good news and I have bad news for you today. I'm going to give you the bad news first, and then we'll give you the good news. But by then, you might not think it's so good news. In the bilingual service, we started a series this summer because of the things that are going on and because of my background and, and just loving to teach prophetically prophecy and things like that. And people have been asking me, Pastor, what, what is going on? Are we, are we in the end times? Are we? And then other people asking me, how, how can you believe this book? How can you believe what churches say? I mean, religion is just a crutch. I mean, religion is just something that you weak-minded people use to control other, other people. And so God put on my heart to uh, teach out of the book of Daniel. And the reason why I chose the book of Daniel is because the book of Daniel is the book that changed my life. It's the book that proved to me that the Bible is real. It's not just infallible, meaning that it doesn't just contain, that it doesn't contain any errors, but it's also sufficient See, because in today's church, we have two camps. We have the camp that says, yes, this is the word of God. This is the good book. But it's not sufficient for today. 
This book was written for people in another time, in another place, on another continent. It's not for us today because today they didn't have to deal with the things that we're dealing with today. Well, when God took me on my journey, and it was about a year-long journey of discovering for myself where I was in my spiritual walk. And this is coming from a, from a man who, came, who grew up in, in a Catholic religion and then walked away from that and then just kind of started doing what I wanted to do and even to the point where I interpreted for a witch doctor in, in, on the east side in, in Five Points. And there was, a, there was a shop there. It's not there any longer. I drove by just to see if it was there. La Caridad del Cobre. Um, with Martin and his wife, and I interpreted for the witch doctor um, named Israel. So, so coming from that to then preaching to you bef before you this morning, preaching the word of God as truth. And see, and, and that's the problem today. How does somebody like me go from believing what they want to believe to saying this is true? Now, I'm going to keep repeating this word true and truth because in today's society, that word is marginalized now. That word means different things for different people. There is your truth and then there is my truth. But see, but logically, there cannot be two truths because in order for something to be true, there can only be one. There are our experiences. We go through different things. But there's only one truth. So we live in a society today and downtown right now as we speak, there are people that are expressing their truth. And they're coming against us because we have the truth, but yet they say that we are hypocrites. In your hand right now, you hold the most dangerous weapon to the secular world. This book, this book is transphobic. This book is chauvinistic. This book is racist. This book is only for those that need a crutch to live their life. But I'm here to tell you, this book is the word of God. And we as people as, word, as people of the word, we need to take a stand. I told pastor this morning, I said, I don't know if you guys are going to let me back in to preach again. You guys have to let me back in to preach at 12 because then somebody's got to preach in Spanish. <laughs> but I'm tired, people. I'm tired, I'm tired, and I'm not tired of, of all the political drama, I'm not tired of, no, I'm not tired of that. What I'm tired of are young people, 75% of them leave the church after the age of 18, to never come back. We bring them up in the church, we send them off to children's church. But yet, when they reach the age of 18, they want nothing to do with us. And so I'm tired. I'm tired of parents calling me and saying, can you help me with my child? But see, but then I talk with them and they don't like what I say. I ask them, how have you been with your scripture reading? How have you been with your prayer? How have you been with your family devotions? How have you been with your example?" As a youth pastor, the biggest gripe that kids had was, my parents are hypocrites. They're one thing in church, and they're another thing at home. You should see how mama treats dad at home. You should see how the things that dad watches at home, but yet he comes here and it's all, praise the Lord, hallelujah. No wonder they're leaving. No wonder we as a church, and I'm not just talking about this church, because y'all are perfect, you guys don't do anything wrong. It's surprising that as a church in today's society, we have now not understood what it means to be separated from the world. We come to church, we make time, and sometimes it's like, 
man, 10 o'clock, that's kind of early. Pastors at a church said they started at 9. You know what? Don't, don't come to me with, oh, it's too early and it's too long. I got to be here till about 2 or 3 this afternoon. See, we, we've made church something that we just do. We have not made church something where we can come to lift one another up, to raise the name of Christ, and to serve the community in where we're at. And see, we've compromised with the world, and I've, I've, I've told you before, my prayer for you as a church is that we become a successful church, but not like the world measures success. Because we can fill the church with members. We, we can fill this church in, in one month if we wanted to, but we would have to compromise the word of God. See, there can be many members of a church, but few citizens of heaven. Just the fact that you're in church doesn't mean you're going to go to heaven. Just because I preach the word doesn't mean I'm going to go to heaven. Just because you sing and play doesn't mean you're going to go to heaven. Just because you're a good person doesn't mean you're going to go to heaven. Yeah, it's going to be one of those messages today. And if you can't say amen, and if you can't say amen, just say ouch. Look forward, none of this. You know, don't, don't be seeing them. Since I decided to preach this message in, in the bilingual service, I warned our people that there's going to be a tax. Because if, if this book, the book of Daniel, it, it's the most criticized book apart from Revelation in Scripture. Universities don't like it. Secular people don't like it. And we in the church, we stay away from it. When's the last message you heard out of the book of Daniel? Oh, we hear about Daniel in the lion's den. We hear about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But we don't hear about the visions and the power and the plan that God has for humanity in the book of Daniel. If you want to read history, if you want to verify scripture historically, archaeologically, it's in the book of Daniel. When you come to this book and you study it, you now have no excuse. After this study, if you deny the veracity of Scripture and the salvation in Christ alone, it's not because you don't know, it's because you don't want to. So, so, so this message for me is, is I, I get emotional because I see... Th Things go on. And, and those of you that have been on the prayer call, Deacon Scepter, I, I love Deacon Scepter so much because we disagree on a lot of things. And I love to stir the pot. I, that, and before I open mouth, I always say, hey, I'm, I'm stirring the pot. Well, I'm stirring the pot this morning. Because I love you. And I love you enough to tell you the truth. And the truth is, the church is not living in its convictions. Now, there, there are beliefs. Okay, you can have a belief. Yes, I believe in God. Yes, I believe in Jesus. Yes, I believe that he is the only way. But a conviction is different. A conviction, you'll take it to your tomb. A belief is only good for you as long as it helps you. See, even, even the demons believe, okay? They're not going to go to heaven, but they do something you and I don't do. They tremble. So, so as we come to this passage, what I want to show you is that we as a church, we live now in a time, you as Christians, you live in a time where you have to take a stand on what this book says. You have to be people of the word. You don't just have to be members of Living Hope Bible Church. You have to be, you have to be people of the word. And unfortunately today, and especially with what happened this week, what I've been seeing and what I've been hearing has hurt my heart because 
We act as though our orders for our life come from the government or the Supreme Court. We, we, we manage our beliefs, we manage our values and our morals based off of a man-made court instead of the Word of God. Now, yes, I'm going to touch on that subject and the subject of abortion and what they said, and scripturally, abortion is murder. That's it. There is no other way around it. See how quiet it got now? See, because we're tying, we're tying that decision, we're tying that decision not with what Scripture says, but where we stand politically. And, and, and what happens is we come to church and we expect the church to serve us in our political realm instead of the spiritual one where we need. And there's going to be an attack. I mean, this past month for Angela and myself has been one of the toughest months for us. We've been in two accidents. We've been sick. We've had hail damage. And God responded no to something we've been asking him for. But yet, I come back and I say, this is the word of God. And so we, we see this, and, and I want to walk you through this. And here's the bad news. We need to stand, but unfortunately, we've got it twisted on as to what it is that we're going to stand for. Okay, now I'm look at through the scripture. The, there, there was this process. Now, now the, the Chaldeans or the Babylonians, as they're known, the Chaldeans, they would come in three waves. Okay, there were three deport, deportations from the nation of Israel. By this time, Israel has been divided. You've got the kingdom of Israel to the north, the ten tribes, the kingdom of Judah at the bottom, the, the two tribes. And so the Babylonians are coming to take away the Jews to make them their people, to make them their slaves. So Nebuchadnezzar comes in, but then Nebuchadnezzar gets word that his father, Nabopolazar, is sick. So then he leaves to go attend to his father. But what he has to do is he has to take hostages back with him so that the Jews will, rem will be non-rebellious. So then what he tells Ashpenaz, and he says, give me about 75 of the best minds of the youth of Israel. And so in those 75, you have these four young men. Now, the, the, the description of these men, youths in verse 4, youths in whom was no defect, who were good-looking, showing intelligence in every branch of wisdom, endowed with understanding and discerning knowledge, who had the ability for serving in the king's court. I'm just going to say I would not have been included in this. <laughs> now, this is the cream of the crop. Let's take them away and let's use them now, now, get this. I'm not going to put words in your mouth. I need you to come to this understanding on your own. Look at what they did. In order to subdue a nation, they went after the youth. Did you hear that? In order to subdue a nation, to put it under oppression, to make them want to come into slavery... They went after the youth. And what do they do? They change their identity. They change their names. Daniel, El, El, the word for God. His name meant God is the one who saves. God, El, that's the name for God. That's one of the names for God. But what the Chaldeans did is they changed his name. Belteshazzar, meaning that their God, Bel, Baal, is the one who saves. So they change their identity. They go from something that they know they are to something that they've never been before. And they tell them, this is now your identity. So that's the first thing they do. The second thing that they did is that they changed their beliefs. By educating them. In that, in that Chaldean education, they would be taught the Chaldean language. They will be taught the, the Chaldean way of doing things. It's totally different than what the Jewish uh, uh, tradition did. 
But they were indoctrinated for three years. For three years, they would go through this education, pretty much erasing what they knew and filling them with what they wanted them to know. See, they dictated what was taught. They were the ones that were said, this is what you are going to learn, this is how you're going to speak, and this is who you are. And the third thing they wanted to do is they wanted to get them accustomed to the Chaldean way of life. Let's assign them some of the king's food. Why not just normal food? Because this comes from the king himself. See, this isn't no 39, is it still 39 cent hamburger stand? Or because of inflation, is it now a dollar nine hamburger stand? <laughs> See, back in the day, I remember when they were a quarter. And I remember cruising on Alameda and going up to that hamburger stand that was right before Federal and grabbing a bag. You got like six of them and like a large fry. And then you just, and you're like, yeah, that's the way you are today, Pastor. But I remember, see, this wasn't no, you know, little 39-cent hamburger. This is, this is some prime rib hamburger. You know, this is that bougie cheese that you can't even pronounce. And then you look at the price, and you're like, for a hamburger? I could have got this at the hamburger. See, and you're like, why the food? See, because they ate not like we eat. They sat down. And it was a social thing. You rubbed elbows with the, yuck, the muckety mucks. And it was the king's food and the king's wine. So you were taking these young men. Now remember, I forgot to mention this. Daniel and his, and his friends, they were about 14 years old. So they take these young men and put them in a place where I'm sure it was nice. And now you're eating the king's food? Every day for three years? Who do you think their loyalty is going to be to? Who do you think they're going to be thankful for? To the king. Forgetting who they were, forgetting their education, and since they're receiving all of this free stuff from the king, now they feel like they owe the king something. Let me tell you people, beloved brethren, that's what's happening today. They're going after the youth. They're changing their identity. They're giving them their education. And they're giving them free stuff. And once the government, once the king gets you used to receiving that prime rib hamburger, you're not going to want to go back. So now when the king says, you will serve me in my court, you'll be like, yeah. We as a church, we need to take a stand. I want you to be a successful church. But not like the world says. I'm not talking about numbers. Now, now we have some deacons in here and we've heard the numbers. But you know what? God will provide. I would rather this church be filled with people that are hungry for the word instead of wanting to be entertained. I'm not, I'm not I'm, I, I told you before, I'm not here to entertain you. I, I'm not here to, to crack jokes and to make you feel good. And I, that's, not my, that's not what God called me to do. And, and, and Pastor Sims and I, we have this, this thing where we've both decided, no, we are going to preach the word of God. We're not going to entertain you. We're not going to entertain the children. I'm not going to entertain the youths on Fridays. I'm not going to entertain those that come for counseling. We're going to give them the word of God. And sometimes the word of God needs to hurt us in order to bless us. And so... You see this, and, and you see this outlined here. We, we've read it, and, and, and so I want to ask you are, you, are you ready to take a stand? Because there is coming a time, and I believe, this is my opinion, I believe it will be before the Lord calls me home that the church in the United States of America will come under persecution. 
So I want you to be a successful church. And you know how I want you to be a successful church? I want you to suffer well. Wait a minute, Pastor. I don't want to suffer. Well, if you don't want to suffer, then you're going to have a hard time being a Christian because the Bible says those that want to live justly shall suffer persecution. And I'm not talking about persecution because of your color or persecution because of your race or persecution because of your economy. I'm talking about persecution about what do you believe about this book? I can guarantee you right now, if we were to go downtown and we were to carry around this book, we would fall under persecution. If we just go down there to walk around, nobody's going to say nothing. As long as you believe in God, you're okay. But mention Jesus, and they go crazy. I want you to suffer well, but I want you to persevere well. Finish the race that God has set before you. Do not go to the left, do not go to the right, but stay centered on the word of God. Because we live in a society that they hate what this book teaches. And so we as a church, when we come here, we need to say, yes, hallelujah, we need to sing the songs. But most importantly, we need to stand on what the Word of God says. And I'm not just talking about, oh, well, 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 well you're, you're hitting on the abortion. I know, okay, well, what about the fornicators? What about those that after church, they go home and watch pornography on their phones? Well, what about those that are, that, are, that are shacking up? Let me look over here so I'm not saying, oh, but pastor, lo lo love is love. It's called fornication. And the Bible explicitly says, flee from fornication. Let it not be named among you. Okay, well, here we go. Since we're all going down that line, what about adulterers? Yeah, you look good right here, but your mind is on your girlfriend that you saw last week. Or your boyfriend that you're texting online hoping that nobody knows. What about watching movies that because of the images on that screen cause you to think thoughts that you wouldn't even do with your wife or your husband? What about the liars? What about the thieves? What about the drunkards? Yeah, pastor, get them, get them. Okay, here's one. What about the gossips? Uh-oh, look forward. Don't look to your side, just look forward. What about those that are disobedient to their parents? That's in that list, too. What are you getting at, Pastor? Here we go. What does Scripture say? We will put up 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Now, I want you to read this. You guys are people of the Word, amen? <laughs> you guys are people of the Word, amen? Yeah. Are you sure? Okay, here you go. This one's for you, then. This one's for you. Look at what it says. And what union can there be between God's temple and idols? Okay, he's asking a question. He's making a comparison. There is God's temple and there are idols. And just so you know, they can't mix. And he says, For we are the temple of God. We are the temple of the living God. Did you guys know that God was here? Amen goes right there. God is here. Do you know why? Not because we're in this building, but because you're here. And if you have Christ as your Savior, then you have the Holy Spirit living in you, so then you are the temple of God. So here's the question. What do you have to do with idols? Because God said, I will live among them. We serve a living, mighty God that's not just up there, far away, out of our touch, but he is here with us right now. And he said, 
I will never forsake you, nor I will never leave you alone. He's with you. In the midst of all this mess, I was offended yesterday. I went to the gas station to put gas in my car, and the pump had the audacity to ask me if I wanted a receipt. <laughs> no, I don't want to be reminded of that. We get offended for the wrong things. God is with you, and he is here right now. So if you are the temple of God, look at what he says. Look at the command for you. He says, I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore, come out. Come out. Sanctify yourself. Come out from the unbelievers. Don't be like them. Don't talk like them. Don't treat your husband like them. Don't treat your wife like them. Don't educate your children like them. Don't use your money like them. Come out and be different. What identifies you as a Christian? If it's only coming to Living Hope Bible Church, then I would challenge you to ask if you are truly a Christian. There has to be a, there has to be a difference in your life. You are the salt and the light of this world. You're not the salt and the light of the church. Wherever you go, you take the light of Christ with you. You take that change that he is effecting in you and you take it to wherever you go to the point people have to ask, are you a Christian? But if you're just blending in, you're going against what God is commanding from you. Come out, come out from among the unbelievers and separate yourselves from them. Now, he's not talking about classism or racism. What he's talking about is he's talking about if you call Christ as your Lord and Savior, there is a difference in your life that you don't talk like them, you don't walk like them, you don't act your, you know, spend your life like them. You are now his because you are his people and he is your God. Don't touch their filthy things. And then he says, and I will welcome you. Are you ready to take a stand? Are you ready to tell your daughter, no, mija, don't, don't wear that. Are you, are you willing to tell your son, no, no, no mijo, don't hang out with them. I remember my mama telling me, mijo, me da mala espina, meaning I get a bad feeling about him. Has your mama or your grandma ever told you that? It's just, I just get a bad feeling. There's just something in me. I just don't sit right. Pay attention to that. We have to be different. Because here's the warning then. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. 1 John chapter 2, it says, Do not love. This is a command. This is not a suggestion. This is not if things go well or if I feel good or if the pastor preaches a good sermon or if I get a raise or if I can put gas in my... No, this is just simply do not love this world. Now, what is this world? It's this system, this society, the entertainment, the government, the politics. And, and seeing this is... And Deacon Scepter knows this, and I've told them before. I, I'm not, it's not that I'm for one side or against another side, but what hurts me is that we as Christians are more known for our politics than for what God says. Do not love this world, nor the thing, nor, nor the things that it offers you. For when you love the world, and here's the warning. I'm going to say this with a knot in my throat because I love you. If you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. If you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. 
So you are not a believer. You are not saved. And if you were to die today in that condition, you'd be praising the Lord right here in the church right now, and the next second you'll be burning in hell. You guys going to invite me again? Why do we not love this world? Because the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything that we see, and pride in our achievements and our possessions. See, when we get to God, we're not going to be like, this is who I am, here's my PhDs and all the alphabet soup behind my name, here's what I have, here's what I've done. The only thing he's going to look at is, are you washed in the blood of Christ? He's not going to look at your color. He's not going to look at your race. He's not going to look at whether you're documented or undocumented, whether you speak Spanish or, or Chuki or you speak whatever it is that you speak. The only thing that will matter is, are you my son's servant? And it continues it. For these things don't come from the Father, but they come from the world. See, the world, they go after the youth, and what are they going after them? with what they want. Make them, make them feel good. Possessions, and, and this is who you are. You have to have this many um, followers on TikTok. Do you know that young women, as young as 12-year-old, are killing themselves because they don't have enough followers on TikTok? But see, but we're comfortable here. Nice, comfy chairs, beautiful building. We're okay. It says, if the love of the world is in you, the love of the Father is not in you. They don't come from the Father, they come from the world. And then he says, the last one, this one I want you to see. And this world is fading away. This world is fading away along with everything that people crave, but anyone, anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. Praise God. So you take a stand. Daniel said he had purposed in his heart not to defile himself. Proverbs tells us of all the things that we should guard, guard your heart because from it flows your life. Living Hope Bible Church, guard your heart. How do I guard my heart? By guarding what goes into your mind. Because what goes into your mind affects what goes into your heart. And what is in your heart, that is what you're going to do. That is what you're going to watch. That is what you're going to speak. If you want to know the condition of your heart and the condition of your relationship with God, look at how you speak. Look at what you watch and watch what you do. And then take those three things and then filter them through the word of God. And if they are things that do not please God, then the love of the Father is not in you. So we need to stand. Take your stand. Daniel said, I have purposed in my heart to not defile myself. See, he told Aspenaz, he didn't say, you know what, I can't eat your food because y'all eat kind of spicy and, you know, I'm kind of weak in the stomach. No. And you know what, you guys cook differently. You guys boil and we, we, and we grill. Uh, you, know, you, guys, you know, you guys do fried and we do, we do more of the salsas and stuff. He didn't say that. He said, if I eat this food, I will defile myself. How many of us have compromised our beliefs by saying, yeah, no, you know what, I, I don't want to go down there because, you know, I'm, I'm busy or, 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 you know, we get that, that fake cold cough. <coughs> I can't go. How many of you have said, no, I will not go with you to that bar because I would sin and I would shame my God, and I would bring dishonor to my wife, and I would bring dishonor to my children. How many of us have said, 
No, I will not do such because the word of God is my beacon, is my plumb line, and my life centers around the word of God. And I have decided in my heart that I will not dishonor God. But see, but we want to be tolerant. So tolerant that we cannot tolerate the truth. And that's why we're, we're like waves that go back and forth. You ever seen a wave? You ever been standing on a beach? I love the beach. Just don't ask me to go swimming in the beach. Because as soon as I go into the water, I hear that Jaws theme. Okay? Now, now I can walk into it up to my knees, and I'm like, wee, I'm in the ocean. <laughs> but there was one time it was up to my knees and it was up to my waist. I took another step, and I felt nothing. And I was like, you know what? I'm a man. And Angela was like 50 yards ahead of me. And I was like, I'm not going to be no, no, I'm going to swim out to where, so I'm swimming, right? I'm a man. And as I'm swimming, da -da. and then right there, a piece of seaweed touched me. I won't tell you what I said, because I'm behind the pulpit. See, we, 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 need, we need to stand. We need, we need to stand on this word. What does the word say? Not what does your pastor say. Not what does the mayor say, what the governor says, what the Supreme Court says, what the president says. What does God say? And if God says it, we need to purpose in our heart not to defile ourselves. And then and only then will we be an effective tool in this community. Then and only then will your family look at you and go, can you pray for me? Then and only then, your kids that have gone off and doing what they want to do, but if they see you living for God, they by themselves will come back and say, I've sinned against God and I've sinned against you. So we need to stand. Proverbs 29, 25 says, Fearing people is a dangerous trap. But trusting the Lord means safety. Who do you fear? If you take a stand, who do you fear? Well, pastor, at work they told me we can't pray. Who do you fear? Well, they've told us we can't talk about Jesus. Who do you fear? Right now in the Supreme Court, see, overshadowed by all of this, is the case of a coach who lost his job because after the game, he prayed with his, with his athletes, and they fired him. And they say, you can come back as long as you don't pray. Who do you fear? Psalm 110, um, 111.10 says, the fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom. See, let, let, me, let me tell you something. These people out in Washington, they'll be, they're going to change. They're, some news is going to come in. They're going to go. They're going to they're come in with their hundred thousands. They're going to leave with their millions. While we struggle every day. But see, but you and I get caught up on, oh, oh you're blue. Oh, no, no, you're, you're, you're red. No, we can't have any fellowship together. At the foot of the cross, there is only one color, and that's the blood of Jesus Christ. <laughs> he says, the fear of the Lord is the, is, is the foundation of true wisdom, and all who obey his commandments will grow in wisdom. Praise him forever. Our wisdom, our knowledge, our understanding doesn't come from what government says, what, what they say, what they put out. Our wisdom comes from the fear of the Lord and the knowledge of His commandments. That is why we tell you, come to Bible study. Tuesday nights, 7 o'clock. Friday nights, 7 o'clock. 
Sunday mornings, come to Bibles because you need to study his word because the, other, the only thing that's going to keep you is, oh man, pastor's message last week was good. This pastor is going to move on. Another pastor is going to come. But the word of, the God, the word of our Lord remains forever. Psalm 119, 46 I hope one day, this, this, is, this is where I want you as a church to be. Look what it says. I will speak to kings. Substitute presidents there. Substitute congressmen, senators, mayors. I will speak to them about your laws. And I will not be ashamed. Have you ever been caught this way? You're in a restaurant. And you know you got to pray because you know you're, you're Christian, right? You got to do the Christian thing. And so you look around. Thank you, Jesus, for this enchiladas I'm about to eat and in your name. And thank you. Or do you sit down and you look around and you look at people's faces? And you use the discernment that God has given you. And you see a couple and you, and you reach out to them and you say, excuse me, I don't mean to bother you, but is there something before I give thanks for my food, is there something that I can pray for you for? Or, or the waitress or waiter that comes to your table and say, thank you, Bob or, or, or Karen, whatever their name is. Um, thank you for serving it. Before we give thanks, is there something that I can pray for you? And if you've never done that, it takes some courage, but, but you'll, you'll get the, uh, oh, 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 yeah, please. And every now and then, you'll get that person that just looks at you and starts crying. Because they're hurting and you are reaching out to them with the hope that is in you. Don't be ashamed. I would hope that we would defend the word of God as much as we defend our political parties. And the church will not be effective until we do. I'm trying to hope. Why do we love our political parties more than we love the word of God? Because we, we don't want people to talk about us. You will suffer persecution if you stand on the word of God. I'm going to tell you right now, in, in the Spanish service, uh, we, we put ads out on Facebook. And, and I put an ad out for, for this series in Daniel. And it got rejected. Because I went against their community policies. F Facebook, they rejected it. And I'm just waiting for one day that our messages are going to be censored. It's coming. I already know it's coming. But what are we going to do? Do we want a full church of members? Or do we want to make the kingdom of God greater? I'm going to close with this. If you're willing to suffer for God because of your Christian beliefs... I want to tell you this morning, God's got your back. Okay, it's scriptural. I love this. See, when, when you, when your life pleases God, Proverbs tells us, put it up, Proverbs 16, 7. Now, now, now take this with you. When people's lives please, not the pastor, when people's lives please the Lord, even their enemies are at peace with them. That's for you. I didn't write that. Let that dance on the surface of your heart just for a second. If your life pleases God, even your enemies will be at peace with you. Daniel purposed in his heart, I will not defile myself. 
And even Ashpenaz says, you know, I'm, I'm afraid of the king because you're in my charge. And if I don't give you this food, I'm going to die. But Daniel said, just do this for us. And then verse 9 in Daniel chapter 1 says, but God. <laughs> he said, look, look at what he said. He says, now God, but God granted Daniel favor. <laughs> it wasn't Daniel. All Daniel did was to be obedient to the word of God and to stand on his beliefs. And you know what happened? God worked in the hearts of Ashpenaz and Nebuchadnezzar. He worked on their hearts and in their eyes, he gave them favor. So on your job, when you are told you cannot do this and you stand on the word of God, God can work in their hearts and say, all right, we'll let you do it. People that want to talk bad about you, they won't be able to. Why? Because of your convictions and how your convictions affect your life and how you affect your life then affects those that are around you. And there are people that are going to be like, man, I really don't like that Pastor Juan, but ain't got nothing against him. Maybe he's a Broncos fan, but that's okay. They're winning the Super Bowl this year, you know. That's a belief, not a conviction. There's a portion of scripture that tells us that in God, that those that are in Jesus Christ, there is now no longer any condemnation. Those that walk according to the spirit and not according to the flesh. Then later on down it says, because we know that those that love God, all things work together for good for those that are called according to his purpose. For those whom he has known, he has predestined, and those he's predestined, he's glorified to become more made into the image of Christ. And then later on down it says, if God is for us, if God is for us, if you stand on the word of God, if you live your life this way, there is no condemnation for you. And there is nothing that man, there is nothing that the courts, there is nothing that INS, there is nothing that ICE, there is nothing that anybody can do to you to separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. So Living Hope Bible Church, are you ready to take a stand? The only way to take a stand is first and foremost, you have to submit. You have to come to Christ. And you have to repent. You have to be humble. I drove by the place where my, where my brother was killed. 24th and Lawrence. That corner, I, I, still, I still can't look at that corner because I, I still see his blood on the sidewalk. There's nothing there now. And people walk by it, people drive by it like nothing. And it just reminds me that our lives are but a vapor. But those that please the Lord will live forever. Do you want your life to please the Lord? If you do, it starts with humbling your life before Jesus Christ. And just basically saying this, there's no magical prayer. It's just simply coming to him and saying, I'm sorry. I've sinned. Whatever it is, whatever you've done, just say, forgive me. I want to change. And now I give you my life and I place you as the Lord of my life. Guide me with your word and give me your spirit so that I can live a life that's pleasing to you. I don't know what's coming. I don't know what's going to happen to me. But right now, I ask you, Christ, to be my Lord and Savior. That's the only way you'll be able to stand. 
if you've already done that, but yet you've compromised your beliefs in one area or another. I, I know we don't do this often, but you guys know I'm crazy like this. Living Hope Bible Church, are you humble enough to come to God's altar and to ask for forgiveness and to ask for the strength to be able to stand? Who's going to take that step and be courageous enough to come down and to ask God to forgive you and to ask God to give you the strength to stand? This is not to judge you because I'm right here with you. But this is just so that as a church we all see one another. This is who we need. We are called together as a church to exhort one another unto good works. To love one another when we live in a world that does not love us hold hands and just say yes Jesus so just right there where you're at everybody with their head bowed just take this moment and and you personally whatever's on your heart whatever you want to give over to the Lord you do that now whatever you want to ask for forgiveness you do that now this is on you and him this is just you and him Father, I come before you because I need you. I can't stand by myself. That is why you tell us to put on the whole armor of God so that we may be able to stand in the evil day. Father, these days are evil. And Father, if I've done something to bring shame to your name, forgive me. Help me to stand Help me to be that person that others see. And they say, there's something different about him, but it's not me, it's you in me. So Father, here is your church, here are your people. Everybody here, Father God, has something on their heart that they want to give before you right now. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would touch their hearts, that you would strengthen their convictions, And that each and every one of us here would purpose in our hearts not to defile ourselves. But we need you to do it. We need each other to do it. Help us as a church to be strong. Help us as a church to suffer well. Help us as a church to reach out to a community that is being lost every day. We call ourselves Living Hope Bible Church. Forgive us for keeping this hope in between these walls. Help us to take this hope in places we're not going to go. Places we may never visit. But use us, Father. If it's hard, you give us the strength. If it's it's something we cannot do, you, Father, give us the capacity to do it. But we are your people, Father. And in your hands we place ourselves. Do with us what your will dictates. But Father, this is a beautiful sight. Your church is here before you. Your church is asking for forgiveness. Your church is asking for strength. Your church is asking for more of your presence in our lives. And we pray, Father God, for our children. We pray for the youths that are, that are being chased by the devil. And some of our children don't want anything to do with us. But yet, Father God, we trust and we pray that one day they will be here. Not for our sake, but for theirs. We pray this in Jesus' holy and mighty name. And together we say, amen, amen. Greet one another, greet one another. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 
some of the women, please, let's, let's come around our sister here. Let's surround her with prayer. Just give her some space so she can breathe. Just give her some space so she can breathe, but let's just help her in prayer. Come on, gather around. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father God, because as a church, we can come before you and pour our hearts out before you. There's no shame in it. There's, there's no, this is not something that's not dignified. This is something you call us, Father, to cry out to you. And so, Father God, your, your daughter, your servant, is crying out to you right now, Father God. You, you work on our hearts. Hear her cries, Lord. And Father, strengthen her. And as a church, we come before her. And we, we say we are here to serve you. We are here to love you. And your hurts are our hurts. And your pain is our pain. So we are here with you, Sister D. In the name of Jesus, we love you. We encourage you. And you are not alone. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And together we say, amen. some water for her. She got it.
gonna ask the deacons to go ahead and come forward and just kind of go on this side. Oh, yeah, we'll do the offering here and then as people can go. So as we prepare our hearts to give, remember to take a stand. So we pray, you can give online, you can give here. But we do it not as other people do. We do it as the Lord leads. Father, in the name of heaven, we thank you for today, Lord, and we know that you're working. We know, Father, that you have spoken. So, Father, just help us to take this stand and help us, Father, to be the people you've called us to be in a world that does not love you. And Father, we ask that you bless these tithes and these offerings. Use them to make your kingdom greater. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen amen. You may come forward and give your gifts. For those of us that are going to continue praying with Sister D, we'll come on down here and we'll, we'll pray with her. We are dismissed unless you guys want to stay for the bilingual service. You're more than welcome to. God bless you. The Lord keep you. And remember always that as long as we have Christ, we always have hope. God bless you. Hallelujah. Come